Yo, what's going on guys? Gonna be showing you how to carry an Olaf and I'm also gonna be showing you the strongest carry Korean Olaf build right now in the meta. For your runes, take Conquer with Triumph, Alacrity, Last Stand with free boots and very importantly, Approach Velocity. This is one of your only tools of gap closing, getting a movement seed bonus whenever you slow the enemies or if they are already CC'd. For our items, we're gonna be going for Gore Drinker, Into Death's Dance, Into Sterix. In that order, Gore Drinker, Death's Dance, and then Sterex, it makes you extremely tanky and front lineable. If you already have a front line, you have things like Tom Kench and Leona, then you're gonna go for Stridebreaker instead. It gives you more stickiness. Gore Drinker tank, Stridebreaker stickiness. You wanna start Q, max your Q first, E second, W last, and you always wanna take Ghost instead of Flash. Only time you take Flash is if they have a Jarvan or York, that way you can get out of their cage, and even then, Ghost is still probably better. Getting the uh extensions on ghost is extremely valuable olaf in the current meta is not the strongest but with this setup he still has a positive win rate of around 58 to 65 percent just depending on what the enemy teams picked whether you get your w level 2 or your e level 2 makes really no difference because the lower you are on health on olaf the faster he clears so it's generally best to get your e level 2 Got a decent leash. Biggest thing Olaf gets countered by in terms of enemy junglers is things that can consistently dodge his axe toss. So stuff like Kindred's really annoying. Elise is annoying pre six, but once you're six, she's kind of irrelevant. Now we're gonna get a point in our W, crossing over pre two minute 30, making pretty good time so far. Olaf doesn't have the best early game ganks. You're usually just playing for uh, kind of scaling up and hitting a good level six power spike or big first item power spike. His ganks and invades are weak since he lacks a lot of mobility. You gotta come deep up behind them. Auto attack E reset, auto attack W reset. Both abilities are good to mix in between your autos. Gonna smite E that. Whenever your E kills something, it refunds, which is really, really nice. Your E costs HP to cast, so something to keep in mind. It's more of a laning tool than a uh, something you really have to think about too much as a jungler. Then to smite that, we want to finish this and go gank. You'll usually be finishing your full clear round 325 on Olaf. Very similar to a Master Yi in terms of healthiness and speed. This is doable even though it's an allow because we're coming up deep from behind. She's also missing a little bit of HP already. Auto attack W reset, auto attack E reset. She burned flash, so not the end of the world. I'm gonna go ahead and leave the wave where it is. I think, wait, Karthus, where'd Karthus just die? Was he, he pathed from top to bot, that makes sense. I guess he started on his blue buff. We could potentially kill him on his Gromp spawn here. I'll attack W reset. Yeah, that's probably what we'll do. Oh, since Olaf lacks mobility, you kind of need to... Yeah, we probably should just skip the scuttle and went straight into him. That would have been better. That should have been an easy pickup. I'll go ahead and reset. In the early game, in terms of invading enemy junglers, you kind of have to run right into them. Be pre-set up. I'll go ahead, pick up Caulfield's hammer and a control ward. Potential will gank mid here since he's pushed up far. We're not there though, so it's most likely not going to pan out. He's going to shove and then leave. Bot lane's also looking gankable because they're shoved. This is obviously not gankable because it lies underneath turret with high HP. We could skip Gromp temporarily and go straight for the gank. With Ghost, it'd give us decent odds. I'll go ahead and leave my ward right there. It's a decent spot. So I think Samira can block my axe with her wind wall, which is pretty annoying. Oh, I wanted that axe toss on Bard so badly. We're not gonna be able to do anything to her, unfortunately. And we didn't get the assist on Bard either. Feels bad. <laughs> Oh well, at least my teammates got the kill. We'll smite it. Auto attack E. And continue our pull clear. He 
You want to try to pick up your axes as much as possible because it puts your Q on a lower cooldown. So normally when you throw it, you want to throw it the minimum distance. That way you can easily pick it back up. You only throw it max distance if you have to. It's more out of necessity than preference. Auto attack double reset, auto attack E, auto attack Q. Ultimately, the majority of your damage will come from your auto attacks, but your abilities need to be mixed in to maximize your output. Looks like we'll be hitting a pre seven minute level six. That's really good. On any kind of jungler who's gonna heavily farm, you wanna hit it pre seven minute 30. Right now it's six minute 30 and we're hitting it, which is really nice. We'll have our, our big power spike here and we'll go kill Karthus on his blue buff. He'll walk right into us. We see it's coming up. If it's yellow, that means it's up in 10 seconds or less. I don't think he's, yeah, he didn't see us there at all. Auto attack double reset. Auto attack E. Gonna go ahead and smite that. And we're gonna have to turn on this guy. Don't know where Alawi is. I'm a little nervous with how Zillion's pathing here. That's fine, I guess. I couldn't really help Zillion at that point. Well, maybe I can. I didn't realize how close GP was. That's my bad. I really should have been there for that. Auto attack E. I don't think Alawi has R, but she did land soul pull on me. Yeah, I should have been there for that. That's our bad. I didn't realize how close GP was. I didn't realize Zillian was going to get a full health bar from his R. That was kind of nuts. But actually full health right now. Karthus R is on cooldown. We don't have to worry about that. Plus W gives us shield anyways. I didn't want to reset. Olaf farms way faster the lower he is on health. And I'd like to get Gore Drinker on our next back because we're so close to buying it anyways that if we reset, it's just how much stronger are we really with a Iron Spike whip type of thing we should be able to get it off these camps here i wouldn't recommend picking olaf if your team lacks an enchanter that has a speed up right now with where olaf's at in the meta he's not a good pick if your team doesn't have a speed up for you so having an oriana a zillion a yumi a lulu some kind of speed up on your team is extremely useful because your R does not go on cooldown as long as you've auto attacked within the last three seconds. So if you can constantly stay on top of them, you can constantly be on R, which means they can't CC you and you also get bonus AD. If you can consistently stay on your R in a team fight, you are objectively one of the best champions in the game. However, if they're able to break away from you and your R only lasts for three total seconds, then you are one of the worst champions in the game. That is the duality of Olaf. The best or the worst? It all depends if can you stay on top of the enemies or not. Our ghost is up. I think we should stay for a gank. We can burn ghost R, get them on cooldown back for the gore drinker. That being said, I think we should be able to get a kill as well from that combo. This guy doesn't have boots. He doesn't have any HP items. I'm going to ghost for this. Auto attack W reset. Got red smite on him. Auto attack E. That was really good for us. Even if we did burn R and ghost for it, that's always worth. You get a kill out of it and don't die. And now we can reset by the time we get back out onto the map. Our R will be halfway ready to use. And we'll have a gore drink. Plus tier 2 boots. We'll go for Ionians. The only time you go Merc Treads on Olaf is if you need it specifically for the magic resist. The tenacity isn't useful because when you're on your R, they can't CC you with anything anyways. Closest thing to being able to CC Olaf when he's on his R is an Anivia wall because you have to walk around it. Their team has triple magic damage, Bard, Karthus, and the Malzahar. Ultimately, I'm more worried about the Samir damage and Alawi damage, so... Ionian boots are fine for this. They're a very good neutral boot because you're not you're not really choosing the path of armor or magic resist. Instead, you have a neutral having lower cooldown abilities. Plus, Ionian boots are cheaper 
than mercs or plated, so it has those two positives going for it. This isn't warded. This is why you need sweeper so you don't waste your time. If it was warded and we didn't know it, we would just be sitting here for nothing. Alright, yeah, I'll go for this. Auto attack W set E. Malzahar can't CC us. Auto attack E. Auto attack Q. That was pretty solid. Two for one's really good considering we were fighting three versus two. The trade was positive for us. We didn't lose our shutdown or anything like that. So remember you use your gore drinker, particularly once you start losing some health, so you don't die. Using it at the start isn't ideal because it doesn't do that much damage. It's basically like an auto an AOE auto tax worth of damage. The Malzahar is heavily countered by us. Our R instantly cleanses CC, and while we're on our R, it can't be CC'd. So Malzahar only does damage to us, it can't CC us, Bard can't slow us, Bard can't R us. It's very challenging for their specific comp to deal with us. They have, their whole team's very immobile. Their only mobility they really have is Samir Dash and Bard Tunnel, which both very long cooldowns. Auto attack double reset. I wouldn't recommend trying to take early dragons on Olaf because you're de you'll be delaying your level six and it can leave you extremely vulnerable since you lack mobility to escape. I only like to do them once I have a full item or close to it. We're gonna R for this, auto attack double reset, core drink. That's really good. One versus three, getting a kill. Okay, GPR two to be fair, but still. I think we got ignited too. It's so funny, just hacking down Karthus. Even if he exhausts us, it does nothing. We can't be stopped. We could take Carold here for sure. We really should since Karth is dead. However, if his top side's up, he's about to walk into me and we'll eat him alive. Yeah, I think he's about to walk into me. I kind of need to spend my gold anyways. So if he comes top for wolves, ooh, he's probably going to go for his red buff. I didn't realize that was spawning in. Oh, okay. All right, all right, all right. He might think I'm in his bot side jungle. Auto attack W reset. Auto attack E. Auto attack Gore Drink. Down he goes. Feels bad for him. Allow is missing a lot of health. She does have full item plus plated. That could be challenging to kill. I, th I say we just go for this. It's not the best herald timing because the plates are already gone, but still. We're going to turn on our R. It's like she's trying to hide on top of the herald so I can't get her. Auto attack Q. Auto attack E. We still have our R on, so. Karthus might try to R here. I don't know. The whole time we had the extra 6280 from our R, which is basically like a full item. Most attack damage items don't give above 50. So that's why Olaf on his R is one of the best champs in the game. But without it, the one of the worst because he doesn't have a jump in his kit or a dash or a leap or a blink. Ghost plays quite nicely because of that. Kills and assists extend the duration of your ghost. It doesn't refresh it, it's better. It extends. So your ghost could in theory last. Well, first of all, per level, the ghost gets faster and faster. And it starts out giving you four additional seconds and then it gets like all the way up to seven or eight. So it could it can last the whole team fight even if it's 30 or 40 seconds. We'll go for the death stance into the sterics. We'll be super tanky and we're not gonna die, which is important because then we can keep all of our conqueror stacks fully stacked while simultaneously staying alive long enough for extra gorge drinker cycle, staying alive longer for more W cycles for this shield and extra attack speed. Very important. When you have such impactful abilities, ultimately staying alive is a, gives you a lot more value than having an extra 20 attack damage. Oh, they quit. 
GG's well played. This game was really short, so we'll go ahead and do a part two. I'll see you guys there. Yo, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to part two of Olaf in the Jung Hole. We're up against a Volibear this time. We should be able to solo him. He has press the attack. We have Conqueror. If we're both high HP and a fight to the death, we should definitely have the upper hand on that. Then they have the GP, Kiana. I think we'll do quite well against their team, other than dealing with Ziri. Everyone else on their team is somewhat mobile. But uh, Ziri can kind of shoot and move giga fast at the same time with like 600 plus movement speed. So Kiana R won't be an issue. Volibear stuns, whatever. GP slows, whatever. Should be an interesting game. Hopefully, like I said, Ziri doesn't get fed because uh, that, that would make this game very challenging. More immobile champions, the better when you're playing Olaf. That's the key. I think... Out of Yumi, Zillion, and Lulu, I think Yumi's the best for Olaf because of her R. There's no way to miss it. And the Yumi is just so consistent. No matter how deep Olaf goes, she can follow. I haven't seen many people playing Yumi these days, though. Yumi's not as popular as she once was, I suppose. I've personally only played that champion once. I play, try to play every champion at least once, so I... And more familiar on how to beat it learn its cooldowns and stuff a little bit better mid lane gets a kill that's awesome i really is a bit of a cheese pick against melee mid laners who do physical damage because of her damage mitigation she can do quite well against like talons and uh kianas she can get she can whip out some cheese kills GP's not looking like he'll be gankable. The only way we can gank top is if it's a counter gank. So we show up knowing Volibear is about to be there. Almost every jungler starts with their bot lane for best leash possible, especially iron through D4. It happens almost every single game. Like probably nine out of 10 times. So we're both gonna end up top side and that would be the counter gank. Volibear usually runs a full clear and fit he can finish pre 315 if you do it right. Uh, videos on that. So He'll get there slightly before us, in theory. Yep, he got there pre-315. He skipped a camp. He only has 20 CS, which means he literally skipped his Krugs. Because he, sh he should not have been able to get there that fast. And he would have 24 CS if he did a full clear. We finished 325. Pretty good for Olaf. Full HP, double refill. Oh man, this is gonna be rough. Darius needs to flash. Auto attack E, got our W on. How many times does this chick get to go invisible though, for real? Come on, baby, not bad. Double a <laughs> double invisibility twice in a row like that. It's kind of kind of annoying. That was a really good outcome though. That That's pretty much best possible outcome for Olaf is full clear and then you get to counter gank. Because you're not going to be able to do a true natural gank unless the enemies are shoved up, which is the minority of the time, maybe 20-30% of the time. A counter gank will happen, I'd say 50-50. So roughly 75% of the time you'll have either a counter gank or a gank to pursue. Go ahead, grab control word. We are the front line for our team, so we'll be going Gore Drinker once again. If you have a real tank front line, like Tom Kench or Leona, you can go for Stride Break, stay stickier. The Ziri got a double kill, that's really bad. That's the only champion we don't want to be fed. The more fed she is, the substantially harder this game will be. Throw the axe in the wall without throwing it over. Makes it really easy to pick up. Auto attack Q, auto attack E. Nice. Bot lane's kind of gankable. The enemies will be shoved up. I'll actually go there for that real quick. Volibear's top side, he hasn't reset yet. His bot side jungle might be respawning in now. The enemy bot lane will be back any second, and they may not go to ward first as they come back. Oh. Good Karth is slow. Auto attack door reset, auto attack E, auto attack Q. That's actually really good. Really, really good. Even if Ziri's unkillable because the champion's OP, Q 
killing the Lulu is huge. Good see my team had the way frozen in a semi frozen in a good spot and made that a clear cut gank opportunity. I would like to soak th soak this XP over the wall. We got to get closer and now we can soak. Look at we just got a huge chunk of XP off that cannon. I love getting free XP. Hitting level six is so important as a jungler because if you're not, if you don't leech any minion XP, even if you have like 15 kills as a jungler, you'll never be able to hit level six before the enemy mid and top lane. You have to leech some minion XP because minions are far more valuable than uh, camps are. Monster camps have been nerfed so much and how much XP they give out. For example, Irelia, look at her. She has one kill. We have three KP. She has one KP. She hit level six way before us with off a of one kill. And that's even with us soaking some mini next beef from bot and mid. We hit level six pre seven minute. That's really good for jungler. Hitting it pre seven minute 30 is ultimately the goal. Volley bear hit it pre seven minute as well. Me and him both have kills and no dads. So he's on his blue buff right now. We'll go ahead and help ourselves and try to leave a monster. That way this camp doesn't respawn. We'll leave control word there. Potential top gank. He's not going to be too happy about this. We'll leave the original medium golem. As long as you live, leave the original large or the regional original medium. The camp doesn't respawn. And we don't want this to respawn. We want him to miss as much XP as possible. We have nothing to gank, plus Herald's down. We should reset. We could stay for plate. I think resetting is better here because bot lane's gankable. Zuri is still like, not, nowhere close to full item. Neither is Lulu. And we're fairly strong. Our ghost and R are up as well, so we want to try to get good value. Get those on cooldown so we can use them again. And whenever I say get something on cooldown, I just mean like using it to its fullest ability i don't mean using it for the sake of using it and not getting a kill so he misses out on wraps and krugs he does get his red buff though he'll probably invade my blue just miscellaneously because he, he'll be kind of annoyed i took his stuff i'll most likely lose my blue buff here which is fine oops you want to wait a second for that to clear out. It still gives vision for a few seconds after it's broken. Yeah, they're playing really defensive. They're not making themselves very gankable. I might have to just play for Heralds this game. This stuff really doesn't feel gankable. All R for this. Auto attack over set E. Barely killed her before she could get off one more attack and finish Irelia. Volibear did just get uh, Harold. That sucks. He didn't get our blue buff though, so that's good news. I have more items in him. We win this. I want him to walk into me. Alright, he's not going to. Darius is going for the pinch. We'll ghost for this. We land a double Q. Auto attack double reset. Red smite. Auto attack E. Into the Q. In the queue, in the auto. Nice! Soak this wave real quick. This is a lot of minions. Nice. I'll dump this. Darius isn't respawning for a little bit. We might as well take advantage of the situation. Oh, but you're taking his minions. He wouldn't even change anything because this wave's going to die underneath GP's turret. So GP gets nothing, Darius gets nothing. Except uh, now we forced out GPTP and we're guaranteeing the wave's going to reset because we crashed it underneath his turret. So Darius benefits immensely and our team also benefits because GP has to waste his TP. I don't think this was warded. We'll find out real quick. It might be with the way he walked there. Yeah, it was warded. That was definitely worded 10,000%. Our R is up. Ghost is down, but nothing's gankable. So 
Go back to farming. Auto attack double reset. Auto attack Q. Mix in the iron spike whip. Dragon's up in 42. We'll reset by then and get gotten our gore drinker. Yeah, we got to reset right now. I don't want to be super late for that. We can get gore drink plus tier two boots against their team. They're very, 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 very physical damage heavy. Therefore, we will go for plated still caps. They have a lethality champion. Armor is a hyper direct counter to that. Then they have GP, Ziri doing mostly physical and Volley Bear doing a 50-50 physical magic damage. They're basically three and a half physical on their team and one and a half magic. And he's rushing it right when it's up. Auto attack door set E. I don't want him to R away, so I'm not going to use my R here. Because I want to be able to keep the duration up. Got it. I'm going to need that OFR. Got it. Got it. Juicy. Well played by the Zillion. Zillion is going to die though. I can't chase that at this exact moment. Auto attack E reset. Nice. Other than E being a solid auto attack resetter, it's also good to auto then E because your E has more range than your autos. So if they're running away, you can always auto then E, but if you E first, they may be out of range for your next auto since you're having to stand still to attack. Red, we'll take red. We could do red Krug's wraps and do a full clear. Scuttle's up though, we'd be late for that. Because that's fine. Wow, I accidentally threw that way too far. Yeah, we'll go ahead and full clear this. Zero is still not a full item, and I am. Plus, I have I have tier two boots, so I'm fast enough to stay on top. They're trying to get turret plates before it falls off. It's gonna bite them hard here. I don't think I even have to ghost for this. I will go ahead and R. Don't want to get slowed down. They're grouping up mid. They got first turret gold. They're going to die for it. They still have ghost. Darius is looking for the dive. Eh. Well, I couldn't quite get her there. I needed to red smite. It probably wouldn't have quite killed her though. I like how Zillion speed up gives you the airy shield. It was really nice. I have a feeling this is going to be an FF15. Unless Ziri thinks she can carry and votes no. She might be able to carry actually. Ziri does scale really well. With Zillion speed ups, it'll be a close call whether or not I can get to her. Got Krugs, taking these. The wave sauce, I timed that poorly. I should have known they were gonna be there for my own wave. That's my bad. Hey, Volley Bear. I can't chase that in all the way. I can go for second herald though. Second herald will do just fine. Hopefully Karthus is my bot side. Ziri is sitting on a completed item. So she will be stronger than him even though he's a level up on her. That was a bizarre animation. <laughs> it didn't even show the charge. It just did it. Since it started the animation before we had vision of it. Just glitched. I say we reset after we can afford death stance. I need about two or three camps to be able to get it. It's 
Might have to take wraps. Could well oh, blue's coming out. I'll take wolves in the blue. Darius can handle himself down there. He's, he has double armor items. Should be he should be do just fine. Their biggest win con right now is Ziri getting the shutdowns on me and Irelia. We need to try to avoid that happening, so we're not gonna do anything like a crazy dive against the Ziri. That'd be the only way she can do what she needs to do this game. Got our death stance and third item still gonna go for Sterex, and then we'll probably go like Thornmail Deadmans. You can always round off your build with melee champions with mobility items like Deadmans or uh, Force of Nature. Basically, an item that Winged Moon Plate builds into, one or the other. Our ghost is up, so is our R. Should be able to close in on these guys. Got it. Even with the Lulu Ignite and Ziri speed, it wasn't enough. Because we're on Ghost R. Olaf R isn't much of a speed up. It only lasts for one second. It's 45% though. But we're on the 38% uh, from the Ghost. Let's us stay on top of her. And then if we land the Axe, we're getting 12... How much movement speed? 15% bonus movement speed from Approach Velocity. And that is it. They FF'd. GG's. Well played. We'll take a look at the graphs. Olaf jungle with a speed up support on his team is extremely viable and extremely dangerous. Looking at graphs, we had the most damage in the game. Looking at damage taken, we took the most on our team, but not quite the most in the game. Looking at runes, got insane value. If you guys enjoyed this Olaf gameplay commentary guide, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. My name is Kingsticks. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.